Hello everybody, how's it going? I'm just gonna get this going. I feel like there are flies in the house, like really, they make like the best guest appearance. Okay, how you doing? This doesn't wanna stay, why is that? Always tripod issues. Okay, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a really easy vegetable soup. Um, the base of this recipe is in my free ebook, uh, Plant Based Life. So head over to my website, veganmichelle.com, if you don't have that cookbook yet. And then you can have the recipe for yourselves. But I'll leave a link to that down in the um, description below. And I've got little Naya here to help me uh, make some vegetable soup. And I think it's really important to just know how to make a really quick, easy vegetable base. I'm gonna start and then I'll talk a little bit more as I go because I need this to simmer a little bit. So I've just got the a portion that I'm gonna make is for two people. So if you have more people, obviously just double it. I'm gonna take this pot and I'm just gonna put like um, a little bit of water in it, like just enough to saute. So I don't know, probably less than a quarter cup. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna heat that up and while that's heating up, I want to say, like I say in pretty much every single video about this vegetable, um, this better than bouillon, this is truly kind of key to this soup. If you have just regular vegetable broth, it will work just fine, but this one I feel like brings a lot of flavor. So in order to just saute the vegetables initially, I'm going to use, I don't know, what is that, maybe like a quarter teaspoon of that, and I'm going to put that in there. and. Like I said, this is really, I don't know, it just adds a lot of flavor, I feel, and it's a really easy way to make a soup or saute anything, really, any vegetables that you're sauteing, um, because it's so flavorful. You can do it with regular vegetable broth if you don't have this available to you, but this really just gives it a nice um, flavor without having to like really think about what spices go together if you're new to cooking or anything like that. Okay, so I've pre-chopped things just because I do have a baby strapped to my chest and it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me. So in here I've got half of an onion and one garlic clove. And I'm just gonna dump that in. And what I'm gonna do with that is just saute it for about three to five minutes. And I think that having a basic vegetable broth or vegetable soup in your arsenal is wonderful because if you're trying to lose weight, um, this is something that will really fill you up and also give you lots of vegetables. This is something you can make ahead of time and have throughout the week. I love to have, I probably make some kind of vegetable based soup once a week just so that if I'm in a hurry or something, she totally wants to eat now, I <laughs> just better. Um, if I'm in a hurry or something, then I just have it on oh, hand. Oh, don't cry little one. So I'm gonna let this saute for just a couple of minutes and then I will bring over what I'm going to put in next. Uh, with this, let me come, let's bring everything over here. With this recipe, what's cool about it is if you have not a lot of groceries on hand, you can still totally make this. I would say most people have a carrot available to them in their fridge, um, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm now, after this is sauteed for like three minutes or so, I'm gonna add in a chopped carrot, just one, and a chopped rib of celery. So. You might even have this stuff in your fridge right now, and if you're like, hey, how's it going? And if you, um, you know, just wanna make something that's easy to make, there you go. This is your food for today. <laughs> so just throwing those in there, and I'm just gonna stir that again. If it starts to seem like, you know, your vegetable broth is going down, um, and you need to add a little bit more, just add a little bit more. You're not gonna get any extra calories in there. You're not gonna get you don't like it? Can you switch it by yourself? I might have to leave in just a second. Can you switch it? <laughs> okay, I'll be there in just a second. So you just let this saute. Give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay, let's switch it. How about that one? You just gotta press that, okay? Okay guys, sorry. I'm back, apologies. <laughs> Um, Chris is working right now, so I was just trying to do spin all the plates at once. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, right? Okay, so once that's in there, the carrot and the um, celery, you just go for, I don't know, a couple more minutes. And now we're just going to add in potatoes. I've cut up probably a little bit too many potatoes, but I would say anywhere from a cup to two cups of potatoes would work fine. I'm using these um, gold potatoes, and I still have the skin on them. You can see right there. Um, that just makes it even easier, right? So if you have like a red potato or a baby potato of some sort, that's fine. 
This is a kind of tender potato that's going to cook quickly because again, this is about speed mostly um, for the soup um, and just to make it really easy for you to do. Then I'm pouring in four cups of water and I may decide to put a little bit more in. What baby? It's dying? Well, you're going to have to just give me a second because I'm making some soup for everybody because people are watching. Okay, so now I'm going to bring that up to um, about a high to just let it boil. And I'm going to add in, because I just added vegetable, um, because I just added water, I'm going to add in four teaspoons of the vegetable bouillon just to give it that brothy kind of salty, soupy taste that you want to have. Um, so it's two and three. And two and four. So if you're just joining or if you're watching this live and you have any questions that you want to ask about the soup or just have any recommendations for what you want to see next, do let me know because I've got about 10 minutes to let this simmer. So if you want it to go even faster, just cover it, right? And I'm gonna, I have it on high right now just to get it going, but I'll bring it down to like a medium. And then you just let it um, boil until the veggies, the veggies are tender and you're good to go. So with that, while that's going, I'm going to tell you some variations that you can do on this. Um, other ingredients that I have back here, totally optional and not necessary. Oh, she fell asleep. Okay, that one's sleeping. This one, I think, is under control. Um, okay, so the soup recipe could be just this. I'm going to add in still a little bit later some frozen veggies. You're calling somebody? Okay, call away. I'm gonna add in frozen peas and frozen corn. I like the organic sweet corn in this because it really gives it a nice um, unexpected sweetness inside of the saltiness. So I would say if you're gonna add any frozen vegetables, definitely do the um, frozen corn. And then I just really like peas too. So choose whatever vegetables that you have or maybe you just have like a vegetable medley. You can easily throw that in. I've got about a quarter cup of the corn and a quarter cup of the peas here that I'm gonna do. Okay, other variations that you could do would be just to make it a little bit heartier, heartier you could add in, um, or, okay, give me a second. <laughs> you could add in organic chickpeas, organic black beans, or organic kidney beans. And that could be something that you wanna do. Another thing that you could add, if you choose, are putting in like a can of diced tomatoes. This is just going to increase the volume and also increase if you wanted to have a little bit more protein. You could also do, <laughs> you could also do things like, uh, leftover brown rice. Eli, please, I'm trying to talk. Um, or you could do leftover some kind of pasta that you enjoy, like a little kind of orzo pasta would taste really good in this. Um, so it's 100% up to you. Eli, please be quiet, okay? Do you want me to, sh do you want to come say hi to everybody here? Because people are watching. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> Okay, so this is just boiling. It's not come to a full boil yet. So, okay, there we go, full boil. And that is that. So what I'm gonna do at this point is, of course, just let it cook. But I think I will add some beans just for a little bit more texture in this particular soup. And I am going to add the diced tomatoes. And then you're just gonna wanna taste it and see what you wanna add. Like I said, if you don't have that better than bouillon, then maybe some spices that you might enjoy putting in would be, of course, a little bit of salt, um, especially if you don't have the better than bouillon, um, freshly ground pepper, maybe some thyme. I feel like cozy soups always taste even better with some thyme. Maybe if you had some fresh parsley, that would work. I actually might put that in mine as well. And then once this is cooked and I add everything else in, I'm just gonna top it with some fresh greens that will kind of just mix into the, that's the wrong word, but like the heat from the soup will wilt the greens. So you could do chopped kale, you could just do uh, baby spinach, and it would be really easy to just, <laughs> I'm really sorry you guys, allow those things to just kind of cook on their own. So let's go over, I'll take you on a little excursion with me so we can figure out what is going on with Eli, and then we'll come back to the soup. <laughs> okay, you don't like this one? What's wrong with it? Okay, so if you are a busy mom, give me a thumbs up in the description because sometimes it's as if we're just doing five million things at once, which is what I feel like I'm doing. Okay, how about this one? How about? How about? How about that one? Okay, sounds good. So 
Tell me, actually, you guys, if there are any moms of young children watching, what are your thoughts on letting your kids, you know, watch TV and watch shows? I really do struggle with it because I don't want him to just be brainwashed by commercials. And I mean, we don't even have a TV, so it's either like a Nick Jr. or it's, um, you know, like a kid's YouTube app. Oh, shoot, sorry. Give me just a second. Yeah, hello. Those are my hands. Um, <laughs> and I, I let him watch, you know, occasionally when I'm filming something, um, but I try not to let it happen for, you know, very long periods of time. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. Let me plug you back in. I feel like we're going to be uninterrupted now. Thank you guys for your patience. Plug it in. Okay, so let's see how this soup is going. Okay, we're boiling, we're good. I'm gonna get a fork so I can just test the potatoes. <laughs> Eli, you're gonna have to wait then, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna take out a potato and see, it's really, basically you're just waiting for the potatoes to cook, right? Potatoes and the carrot. Eli, okay, so I need a couple more minutes. The celery, the celery's tender, the carrots are tender, but the potatoes need just a little bit longer. So I'll go ahead and halfway cover that again, and we'll do that. And then I'm gonna show you actually what it looks like in here. Let's see if I can show you. Eli, I understand love, but I'm doing something over here. You're gonna have to just wait. So this is this, and you can see all of the veggies. And of course, if you wanted to put any other veggies in there, you absolutely could. So I would say that's gonna just need a couple more minutes. Put this back onto the tripod. There we go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my, my add-ons, right? So things like um, the beans. I'm gonna use the organic chickpeas. And I'm gonna undo that. And of course, drain it because then you're just gonna have a bunch of extra water in there. So let me drain this in the sink real quick. Do I? Please stop. I know, love. You gotta stop pressing it because then you get some weird stuff going. So again, just gonna add in this whole can of chickpeas. Stop the boil a little bit, and then I'll add in my frozen veggies. So my corn and my peas, and give it a good stir. And then here's something that I enjoy doing with my soup once it's, um, oh, I'm gonna add in these diced tomatoes because why not, right? We're gonna add a little bit more liquid and then I'll taste it and tell you if I feel like I need to put some more um, better than bouillon in there. I think I'm gonna add with the water in there. This is just diced tomatoes organic, doesn't have any extra flavor on there. So this is increasing the volume. You know, you're really getting a very low calorie soup so far with what I've put in. Okay, and let me give it a taste in just a bit. I forgot what I was going to say. Hey, how many years of vegan have I been? I've been vegan since 2009, so that would make it 12 years. Um, I think somebody else asked that recently. Yeah, I can't imagine not being vegan. This is absolutely something that I will be doing my whole life. I, I feel like it's so easy, and that's kind of the reason I started doing these lives was because I wanted to show you guys how easy. Do I honestly feel healthy? Absolutely. I, I can't imagine how unhealthy I would feel on a standard American diet. And if you're out there and you're watching and you are on a standard American diet or if you're vegetarian or if you're, you know, whatever, there's so many diets out there or ways to, to live. Um, this is nothing against you, but I feel so healthy. I would never go back. I would never go back to eating animal products. I would never go back to having meat. I can't even think about it. Like that just sounds disgusting to me. Everybody's on their own journey. So I don't say that to shame anybody. But absolutely not. There's so much variety that you can have, especially, I had a hard time losing weight as a vegan, but I felt great. Okay, cool. Well, I think that a lot of people have a hard time losing weight because maybe they're eating the wrong kinds of foods. So things like this, this is a very low calorie density food. If you watch any of the other videos on my channel, you'll know that I talk about this all the time. But the way that you lose weight, just in a nutshell here, because I have so many videos about this and I don't want to bore anybody if you've heard me talk about it so much. The way that you lose weight on a vegan diet is sticking to low calorie density foods. Anytime you want to lose weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit. You have to be having less calories than you need to maintain your weight. That's the case 
whatever diet you're on. And the easy way, easier way to do that on the vegan diet is make sure you have lots of foods that are high volume, like fruits, vegetables, um, whole grains, beans, legumes, things that will fill you up, fill up the volume of your stomach, um, getting rid of oil, getting rid of processed foods, um, so that you feel full and yet you're still maintaining that calorie deficit. So that is truly in a nutshell how you lose weight on a vegan diet. Um, I think a, a major misconception of when people go vegan is that they begin to eat a lot of avocados, a lot of nuts and seeds to feel satisfied. And of course you're gonna put on weight because you're eating higher fat foods. Um, maybe you've got oil in your diet and that would be another way that you can just get rid of that and you know get rid of a ton of calories. In your diet so if you want to learn more about any of that stuff just look at the wait list uh, or the weight loss uh, playlist let's see Venus didn't work uh, for five years I guess I had gut issues I've seen so many doctors explanation uh, your comment just faded away plant-based yeah okay so if you don't want to be fully vegan be you know whole food plant-based 90% of your diet coming from whole plant sources. I cut out gluten recently because I thought you were silly. Yeah, well, you know, here's the thing. Let's just talk about gluten for a second. Um, again, this is something that I feel like I've talked about in a couple of other videos, so just definitely search my channel. Um, only one to two percent of the population are truly gluten intolerant. Um, some people may have sensitivities to it, and if you do feel better cutting that out of your diet, all the more power to you. There's still plenty of low calorie density foods that you can eat on a daily basis that don't contain gluten in them. I'm gonna turn this down because it's getting crazy over there. Um, so if you feel like you, you are gluten sensitive and you don't wanna have those foods in your diet, take them out. But like I said, only one to 2% of the population either has celiac disease or truly has an intolerance to gluten. I know I'm gonna get some maybe bad feedback about that, but if you look at the scientific studies, that is the truth, and I feel confident saying that. Um, but again, if you wanna cut those things out, cut them out, because if you're having lots of fruits and vegetables, yeah, same with dairy, try to introduce it again and develop acne. Acne and dairy are hugely tied together. If you're dealing with any acne, cut the dairy, and you'll see a big difference like within a matter of a couple weeks. It's amazing how powerful food is. I feel like I'm talking about things and then stopping uh, mid-thought, mid, uh, so I, I hope that I've answered your questions a little bit, because um, somebody's asking live if you're watching this later and you're like, what is she talking about? Who is she talking to? Not this baby. I'm talking to uh, a lovely viewer who's been really wonderful sharing her story. Um, so yeah, there's food has such a huge connection to so many areas of health for us. Um, I just, I can't, knowing what I know now, I couldn't go back because I know how healthy um, and how um, over, just the overall health that is developed when you change your diet to eating this way. Meanwhile, my soup is overboiling, so let's stop. Okay, so let's taste this and see how it's going. My biggest concern when cooking with a baby strapped to my chest is that I do not burn her head, so mm, that's really good. I think if you do add in any kind of beans or um, the diced tomatoes, you're going to want to let it cook a little bit longer than the 10 to 15 um, minutes just to give it some time to incorporate. So I'm going to add in about a quarter teaspoon, quarter teaspoon again of that Better Than Bouillon. And now I'm going to add in some um, freshly ground pepper. Actually, I'll probably just add this to garnish. I'm going to go to my pantry here real quick. And if you feel, that is my oven saying, it's what supplements do you take? I have issues with brain fog. Okay, um, let me go back to the soup real quick. I'm going to put in some ground pepper and I'm going to turn that off maybe. No. Okay, it'll turn off in a moment. Um, I'll put in a little bit of salt there. Like I said, I'm gonna put fresh thyme and I'm going to put, that's what I have. Oh, I will answer your question in just a second. I have these little chili peppers. I'm gonna put, um, these are from my friend's garden. You can't see them. Looks like that. They're really, really hot and they add like so much heat to this soup, but I really like it. If you don't have that, you could use a jalapeno pepper, just half it and slice it. Um, and if you don't like hot, like spicy hot for your soup, then obviously don't add it. Okay, somebody just asked, what supplements do I take? And if you're eating a flies, if you're eating a wide variety of um, whole plant foods, you really can get the majority of your vitamins and minerals from the food that you eat. 
but if you want to supplement in addition, you could obviously do uh, just a regular multi. The one supplement that uh, vegans don't get in their diet is B12, so I do supplement with a B12. It's just like a little spray. Um, and right now I am breastfeeding and I am postnatal, so I am taking a lot more supplements than I normally would. Um, I feel like I talk about that. I'll try and link the video down below where I talk about what I'm taking right now. Oh, it's the postpartum Q&A, that's what I talk about. But on a regular situation where I haven't just had a baby and she's literally sucking the life out of me <laughs> in the best way possible, um, then normally I don't take anything except for B12. I hope in a roundabout way that answers your question. Okay, so let's get this soup in a bowl. Um, and normally I just store this in the fridge in some glass jars with a lid. Uh, you could probably freeze this if you want, but I just go through it so often that it's not really necessary for me to freeze. And then I'm gonna show you how to just, you know, the key is, especially for weight loss, you just wanna get in as many vegetables and low calorie dense foods as possible. I came across a video late, what veggies are in the soup? Oh, no worries, hey Chantel. Um, the, I'm gonna leave the recipe down in the description below, but just quickly, I did onion and garlic saute, and then I added in a carrot and a rib of celery, and then I added in about a cup, cup and a half, it, it is really good, a cup, cup and a half of potatoes, and then I added in um, one can of garbanzo beans drained, one can of diced tomatoes, um, and I put in frozen peas and corn. So really, you can make this your own. It, you can make it however you'd like it to be. And now I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna add in some, um, what am I talking about? I'm adding in some baby spinach, there it is. Okay, here we go. Let me get that out of the fridge here. So I've just got some pre, you know, washed baby spinach, and I'm gonna stick this on top. I had said earlier you could do kale, you could do, any kind of leafy green that kind of seems like appetizing to you. So I'm just gonna take a handful and I'm gonna stick it on top. So the more veggies that you put in this, obviously the more full, thank you, love your lives, aw, thanks. Um, then, you know, you're just gonna be more satisfied and that's truly the key, right? When you're in this calorie deficit, you wanna be satisfied. I'm gonna not pour this on my baby's head and I'm gonna just kind of allow that to sit for a moment and let the, the spinach wilt. Um, the thing about soups that I find anyways, and I'm sure you agree if you've cooked a soup ever, is that the longer you let them kind of just sit there, the better they get. So let me, I don't want to move that tripod because I, for fear that I can't get it back to the right position. Um, something is very wrong with it. So I'm going to add some freshly ground pepper here. I'm going to put a little bit of salt. Actually, I will move this because I don't want you guys to miss out on what I'm doing. Not that it's like epic or anything like that, but then you can see. A little bit of salt, and then I'm gonna add in those chopped up little red peppers. So those are the ones, they're super spicy. Um, I wish I knew what these were called. If you know what they're called, let me know. Looks like this in the whole form. Um, I definitely, do you do oil-free? I do do oil-free, and I think it's a huge, huge um, game changer when it comes to overall heart health as well as weight loss. If you wanna, um, lose weight, you gotta get rid of that oil. Um, one of my clients is watching right now and she will attest to that for sure. Okay, so here is the finished product. If you wanted to make it spicy, you could also put jalapeno in here. Um, okay, I talked a lot in this live, but if I was not talking and also not switching the, the computer for Eli, then you would know that this probably only takes about 15 minutes to make. That is the finished product, something that you can easily throw together at the beginning of the week. Yeah, really yummy. Something that you can easily throw together at the beginning of the week, have in your fridge and just heat up as you need to. Come on, tripod. Come on, work with me. Oh, what the heck? I need to get a new one. Um, or you could just make it quickly. Like the way that this originated was Chris normally works at night. And so while he was working, oil-free is not hard and you can get so much flavor. Yes, girl, you know it. You know it firsthand. Um, I, I was, you know, just overwhelmed uh, as a mom and just trying to go through bedtime and realizing I hadn't eaten in a really long time. So I was like, what can I throw together to make this soup and make it quickly? And that's how this little recipe originated. So I think that you'll really enjoy it, but I do totally recommend getting the Better Than Bouillon vegetable base. 
in there because that's going to add a lot of flavor without really having to have any guesswork go on of which spices to put. I wasn't a big fan of oil free. Most of my food was too bland, boring, and made a lot of stir fries. Oh, girl, then you need to be introduced to my recipe playlist because if you think oil free is bland and boring, think again. Anybody out there who's oil free, give her some encouragement down in the description or down in the comments below. Usually stick to three recipes, haha. <laughs> Oh, are you, Taylor, are you a girl or a boy? I can't tell from your picture. I'm sorry if you're a man um, <laughs> or if you're a girl. I couldn't tell. It's just too little, that's all. Um, well, Taylor, um, there's so many things that you can try. There's so many, it's good to have like a few recipes on hand that you just kind of rotate to just make sure that you're staying on track. But there's so many things that you can make with oil that you can make without oil. So true, Michelle knows how to cook oil for you. Yeah, I do, I do. It's really, really good. And it's good because like you said, Taylor, you know, if you feel like this is something you, oh, I'm a guy. I'm so sorry, Taylor. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. I just couldn't tell because it's so tiny. Um, sorry for calling you a girl. <laughs> So use the bouillon cube, sorry, there's so many comments right now. Use the bouillon cube for flavor, absolutely, yeah. So this is the one, in case you came late, um, this is the one that I used for this, and I use it for a lot of my recipes. Um, this, Taylor, is something that I re would recommend getting if you can find it where you live. I know you can get it on Amazon um, also, so if you can't find it where you live or in your grocery store, but I feel like it's pretty widely available in America anyway. Um, if not, then use some other vegetable bouillons. Another one that I really like for kind of lighter tastes, um, oh, you have that, okay, cool, would be this Rapunzel one. Those two are my favorites, and I think they're, I think it's really important to have vegetable broth or bouillon that you enjoy the flavor of, because that is going to help a lot with oil-free cooking. Um, so yeah, did I answer your questions? I hope so, I hope I wasn't too scatterbrained. Thank you guys for sticking with me. I will put, Although this recipe is in my free cookbook that you can get on my website, um, I'll just put a link to it uh, so that you can have the recipe, although I explained it a little bit. I'll just go through it one more time. Hopefully I don't have any technical difficulties like I normally do when I say I'm gonna recap the recipe, but I'll put it down in the description below in case something happens. Yeah, I have that pretty sure. Okay, awesome, Taylor. Yeah, try it with that. And really, there are so many recipes on my YouTube channel for free as well as my website, veganmichelle.com. Um, go test those out because I would hate for you to feel like, oh, well that didn't work because the food sucks and I'm bored because it's not boring at all. It's totally something that you can do um, and cook without oil and still have a lot of flavor. Get reacquainted with your spice drawer or your spice cabinet because you need to put spices in your food. Um, you need to have things that you enjoy to eat, right? Okay, recapping. Sorry, I'm so like all over the place in this video. <laughs> recapping, I did uh, with just a little bit of that vegetable then better than bouillon and a little bit of water. I sauteed half of an onion and one garlic clove. Let that go for a couple minutes. Then I added in one carrot chopped, one celery rib chopped. Did that for a couple more minutes. Added a little bit of vegetable broth at that point if you feel like it, you're you know, sticking to the pan or anything like that. Then added in about a cup to two cups of baby potatoes or gold potatoes, something that you don't have to peel the skin off um, because it's nice and tender. And then I added in four cups of vegetable bouillon, uh, so like four cups of water plus four teaspoons of that better than bouillon. Put that in, so that's the liquid base of the soup. Then I added in one can of beans. Thanks, I'll check it out for sure. Awesome, thanks Taylor. Um, I added in I added in garbanzo, be garbanzo beans, garbanzo beans, but you could do kidney beans, white or red, or you could do black beans, anything. Um, then I added in a can of diced tomatoes, um, and that's pretty much it. Then I just let it simmer until the veggies were tendy tender. <laughs> What is wrong with me? Um, simmer until the veggies are tender. Basically, you just want to cook it until the potatoes and the carrots are tender. And then I added in a quarter cup-ish around uh, of peas, frozen peas and frozen sweet corn. Add in whatever vegetables you want because you want to make it your own. Once that was done, I was talking for a long time, right? So I just let it sit for a bit, which makes it taste even better. I added in freshly ground pepper, some salt, and then I topped it with baby spinach. You could chop up some kale and that would be a great way to get more veggies in there. And that's it, right? Um, if you want, you could add in more beans, you could add in some grains, you could add in some, um, you know, whole food pasta um, or minimally processed pasta. That's it, yeah? Okay, cool. Well, thank you guys for, I, I really like doing these lives because I get to talk to you or see your comments as we go um, and I get to talk to you. So I, I appreciate your questions and I appreciate you guys watching, I really, really do. So if you have any requests for recipes that you wanna see me make next time, 
do let me know because I'm kind of just like flying by the seat of my pants of what I think that I want to uh, share with you guys. So if there's anything in particular, please let me know. Okay, this has gone on long enough. I hope you can hear me from this microwave fan uh, whenever it turned on automatically because I can't shut it off. All right, have a wonderful Sunday. And if you're watching this in the future, hello, future you, hello, future me, and enjoy your day. Thank you guys so much. Recipe will be down in the description below. Bye. Maybe.